I was telling you about like ergonomics and choils, you see here? If you actually look, how you hold this GB is the same way you hold this boker. Look at it. Same idea. Except the boker ends here and the GB continues down there. Uh, you know, so when you get, it's now getting into like smaller knives and stuff. You know, smaller knives. This is that one that I didn't put the washers back in because it's a piece of crap. You have to realize again, it's like these smaller knives such as like the Sage and the Dragonfly, these, this Boker right here. You know, you can't, you know, this is, these are not good for tactical use. Definitely not. Even the, uh, the Delica. It, it starts to get too risky, too dangerous to try to get that proper grip quickly. You know, you, whether or not, if you grip it here, you're in trouble if you stab. And you grip it here, and you know, you just, it's so small, like, will you grip it with all three if you can fit them? Or will you grip it with two? How do you get a secure grip on that? In this instance, I think that this design that emphasize just one major choil like this, you know, one that's just locks in something, and then the rest, you know, oh, look at that, there's that. It's not thick, but it's a very wide section to compensate, to allow you to grip it, you know. Or some extreme choils and bevels, you see, beveling, choil, I mean, it, you know, Lots of ergonomics, still the safety. You see what I'm saying? Uh, when smaller knives, you know, that's an important aspect that the, the the choils and ergonomics. Uh, regardless, now the next thing is you gotta look at then what kind of person you are. See, this goes back to that theory of what kind of person are you? Are you someone who stabs or slashes? And how do you figure this out? I mean, do you think you are more likely to try to, you know, impale somebody or slash at them? And that will determine your knife. I mean, some knife shapes like uh, Anzo Haddock or um, what's it called? Uh, well, Anzo Haddock is a good example. With the with the very extreme, it's like a sheep's foot worn cliff where there really is no tip. There's only a, a, a cutting edge. You know, it's it's just kind of oh, then Sabenza Insigno. That shape just makes you want to slash. And then some shapes like this make you want to stab. But you need to figure out not only when you hold it, what it makes you feel like you're going to do naturally, but you need to know what you're going to naturally do. I mean, are you the kind of person that would more likely swing their arms around or stab? And based upon that, you know, are you the kind of person who's going to hold the knife properly, you know, so that when you do stab, you're not going to injure yourself, you know, by resting against your palm. And is the design meant for that? Is it really meant for that? Because some designs are not, you know. Can you stab with the SNG? Yeah. Yeah. It has a gunner grip. sits in your palm. So does this this knife right here sits in your palm. So does a Chazula. sits in your palm. You know, but do all knives do that? Not particularly, no. I mean, this one has a soft curve, you know, and this one has kind of a soft curve too, but it does still sit in your palm, uh, you know, to a degree. You know, but it has a flipper if you get the flipper version, which, it, it, you know, I like better. But regardless, the point is, you have to figure that out. I mean, your, your handle grip, how you hold the knife, and what you're going to do with the knife, basically. You know, are you going to hold the knife properly every time? And, or is it going to be a knife that's forgiving? And now, this SR11 is a good example of ergos. You see, some knives, like the, you know, the Bob Lom Tanto, or Num Num Zan especially, you, know, you, have to, you have to be able to manipulate the knife. You, know, you need to have the skills to do it, to, to hold it properly and, and lock it in your hand, and know how to, you know, know how to grip it. And, you know, and as time goes by and you use a lot, you, know, you can learn to kind of like a car, push its limits. You know? extend your reach even further and further. So it's kind of fun. You can grow with the knife if that's your skill level. But on knives like, you know, but some knives like this SR11, you see, it's contoured in a shape to where it just, it does it for you. This knife, the moment you hold it, your hand is locked in. You know, if someone had never held a knife before or never had any practice with knives, they could hold this knife and have a secure grip. And that's what you have to look at. Whatever your handle choice may be, the style, you have to consider your skill level. If your skill level is not, you know, very, very, you know, how you say, uh, fine motor skills and very ambidextrous, then you might want to consider a knife that just locks it in for you, makes it simple for you. And that's an important aspect, which is those flippers and choils. Good knives meant for hard use or tackle use should have some sort of safety to where if you did not wave it open all the way completely and it got just something happened, you know, or if you didn't flick it open properly, you know, that if it does disengage, it doesn't cut you. Just like that knife. Just like this knife. Not as good, but still does it. You know? Just like as the Delica. You know? Some method to prevent you from losing your fingers and your hand. 
Not all knives do this, by the way. Okay, just FYI. So you have to look at it. if it claims to be hard use, it better have that, you know. And and, and if, especially if you consider using it for tactical use, just understand uh, if it doesn't, you're you're taking a risk. Uh, one that I suggest don't do, um, especially if you do any sort of stabbing motions. Okay. I mean, ultimately, what you want is no matter how you grab the knife, when that you know when that quick situation of or, you know, where you're reacting. You know, it do, you you just it locks in. No matter how you hold it, I mean that's what you you want. If you can find a knife that you know, and again, if you feel familiar with it, you're comfortable with it, you've used it constantly, you you know the knife, then that's the best thing you could do. You know, for you, I mean, just choose the knife that you you are familiar with, and you, but at least try to base it off. We'll start at least by choosing a design that's worth uh, using. Let's go. So let's go into the next part about lanyards and clips. Okay, if we're looking for consistency, first of all, lanyards you don't see them on on you know. You know, there's a little lanyard hole, okay, it's like an afterthought. You know, spire code, you know, people want lanyards, okay, great. Small knives, not much to hold, correct. It helps to have a lanyard to help you hold something. But, are you going to, you know, the lanyards can snag on things and someone could sneak up and just pull your knife out of your pocket. Uh, plus, a lanyard is not consistent, depending. A Chris Reeves style lanyard on an Umnum Zan, especially the, I think the uh, Umnum Zan, it stays in place. It stays right here, and it sticks out like that. It doesn't move. It still can, but it's more consistent so that when you grab it, it doesn't interfere and get stuck between these fingers and the handle. Knives like this, where it can move around, hopefully if you tie it right and tie it tight enough, make sure you do that. You know, this one, I wouldn't suggest because it'll just flail around. You don't want that because what if you grab it? What if you grab it and your lanyard's here and you flick it open and touch the lanyard and then it didn't open all the way? I mean, it's not consistent. This is more consistent because it's, it's stationary. You're looking for some form of knowing your knife, you know, feeling just like that Sabenzo with its, with its lockup methods, I mean, with its pivot. You know, it's consistent. You're aiming for some kind of, that is something valued, you know, a reliability to it, knowing its performance, knowing that that's going to happen, knowing every time you grip it that it's the same knife. Lanyards and pot clips, all that goes to just you don't want to lose your knife big aspect if you take a fall if you're running you know you don't want to fall out of your pocket now knives like Spyrocos with a little bit more flexible a little bit more slippery pocket clips uh, don't do this that well you know, some Spyrocos like this uh, uh, Delica ZDP right here has the uh, the um, kind of like a somewhat of a grippy coat that's a little bit more t uh, texture on it but regardless you know you know these pocket clips have a shape you see, that's for your finger to go into the grab. That's, that's that mechanical again. It's not the friction that lets you grab, it's that shape. Uh, even on these, you know, uh, you can see like it's a common thing. Let's see, on uh, Mr. Reeves, it's the overall slope, but his has B blasting, so it's much grippier. Uh, to the striders that have that slope, you know, for you to grab, it, it is there intentionally so you can pull it on it. And, um, you know, so you're talking about like multiple pot clip positions, correct? So, you know, if this is a, a secondary knife or a third or a fourth knife on you, you know, you put this on your shoulder, your different, you can strap this in different places with those different pot clip carries, you know, and you can then, you know, if it was, you know, upside down, you could pull down if that's what you want to, you know, easily then open it. Um, but I was talking about how there's a certain point to where when it's too deep, the pot clip goes too deep, that's not correct. Um, we, we ever talked about like how tactically a pot clip you know, correct, it shouldn't push on the lock bar per se because that'll make it, if you grip it hard, then you, it'll push on the lock bar and you won't open your knife. But as you can you see, I already showed you that on Striders and on this Hinder, the RJ Martin, they all do that same effect. I mean, that's, uh, you know, an oversight that very few make, you know, but depends, you know, on, on, a, on this knife. Now, so tip down, you know, like I said, some people, uh, you know, certain tactical people like Rob Walker, the M1 guy, uh, combative edge guy, he it's, for his skills, he likes to pull it from tip tip down and then be ready just pull straight out of his pocket and flick it open you know um, but what's the the proper place for pocket clips is you know, some pocket clips serve as the lock bar stop uh, we'll get on the locks uh, locking systems later but the point is you know if it's too deep you just don't have anything to grab you know there's just not enough in your in it's sticking out for you to actually get a grip grip on you know uh, such as the sage especially when this is wet and this is a prime example of the sage deep pocket slippery pocket clip you know what I mean? Slippery surface here. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's hard to pull the sage out. Uh, not exactly a lot of bulk towards the bottom either. Um, so, 
for everyone who always likes deep pocket carry, like those new zero intolerances, they're gonna make them deep pocket carry, okay? Don't ruin for everybody, okay? You might think it's nice to have a knife sit deep in your pocket, true, it probably won't fall out as much, okay? But that's not tactical, that's not gonna help. Uh, and thankfully, uh, people who know, like, you know, whether it be Hinder or, or you know, Strider, you know, they, they keep doing it this way, and maybe Mr. Lum, because, you know, they know what's up. You need that, that area, that that extra area here so that if you grab it you can catch something you see you can catch something you can see that shape recurring that little shape right there uh, it recurs on this you know it's on even these slightly you see it's this bolt for you to grab you know in case you, you know extra uh, so you understand that that's a proper tactical position for a clip uh, whether it be tip down or tip up, uh, up it is that that's personal preference and uh, and depends on the design. On um, this one, you know, uh, you know, you always you can shake it open too. This one is very versatile. Uh, so you know, you, taking into consideration those things. Okay, so now we're going to talk about lockup methods. Okay, so first of all, no autos because okay, uh, they have videos of this. I mean, when you when you drop a, a knife in dirt, uh, you know it'll jam up the lock. If it's something like an axis lock, uh, those springs can break. You know, after a certain number of locks, times they break. Um, you know, I see blade playing them all the time. I mean, you, you want something you can feel, something you can grip, I mean, something simple. You know, something dirt gets in there, just pushes aside. I mean, you want something easy to maintain, low maintenance, and durable. I mean, obviously, the more parts you, you have in a small amount of space, the more delicate everything is. Just like a, a fancy cell phone, you know? Uh, you get some kind of basic old-fashioned one, like a frame lock, it's going to be stronger. Between liar locks and frame locks, which one is better? Now, that's an important thing on, on, on uh, there's that deployment. See, on this knife, when we pull it out, you can, because of the liar lock, you can hold it as tight as you can and grip it hard. And then when you shake it with your wrist to flick it open, you're not putting any pressure even when you grip as hard as you can and you flick it open, no pressure is being pushed on that lock bar, you know? And that's why there's that, uh, RJ Martin, he added that little carbon fiber plate right here. Um, when you have frame locks, correct, if you hold them incorrectly and you push really hard, it can make it hard for you to open. Uh, so, you know, there's a trade-off. Which one is better? Technically, a liar lock has something people call the hinder stabilizer. Okay, the hinder stabilizer, people think, is to stop the bar from going too far out. Uh, so let's show a good example. Like, for example, here's on the Chris Reeve, right? Uh, you push the bar out, and you can keep pushing it too far, and it stretches further out that way. And so they put a stabilizer bar. Uh, a lot of people, like Mr. Reeves, though, he knows that, so you put a pot clip to reinforce that. Um, on a military, well, this is not a good example. They have knives where the pocket clip rests on, like, the, this, just like that, to kind of stop it. But the, the thing is, uh, these, uh, the, the whole idea is, uh, first of all, I'll tell you more about the hinder stabilizers. That's not only what it does, not really what its function re truly is. Well, a liner lock does the exact same thing. By having a G10 plate, there you have a hinder, you have a stabilizer in that aspect. So, I mean, you know, now you just add a, a fancy little screw and a little tiny piece to just do basically what a liner would have done. Because if you remove this liner, it's the same thing as a frame lock. I mean, there's no real difference. Now, when, in terms of how strong frame locks are, people are always talking about this, like how thick the, the cutout is. The actual strength of a lock is down there. It's that thickness because that's, right? That's true. The actual surface, though, of, you know, how thick the actual lock bar is towards the top only determines how much uh, traction and, and grip there is on the back of the blade tang, you know, how much it actually, uh, you know, holds the, the knife and, you know, that, that friction there. The more surface there, of course, the better. And But this is actually what can, uh, can makes the tension. So why is there a lock, you know, sometimes cut out on this side, uh, sometimes cut out, uh, you know, multiple times like this, uh, this combative edge right here, you know. What that then happens is, and that just depends on how smooth the knife maker wanted to make it. Uh, you, you know, you have a shorter lock bar, you know, even especially wide, it's going to be really hard and stiff to, to unlock. So, you know, they might add a lot more, you know. Uh, you know, if a really long, straight lock bar like on Umnum Zan, you know, you know, he'll just add maybe two like that. Uh, it's just, that's just trying to, what they want to have for that smoothness. You know, because this, this lock bar, this area is actually thicker than some of those, but it puts tons of cutouts so that you can, you know, still push it aside easily and make it a smooth unlocking. Now, um...